My name is Nathaniel Stiffarm, and I will be discussing the general structure and function of the organ systems that are affected by diabetes. So to start, diabetes is when the pancreas produces little or no insulin, and insulin is needed to allow sugar or glucose to enter cells to produce energy. So there are a lot of organ systems that are affected by diabetes, and so we're going to start with the circulatory and cardiovascular systems. These are all your blood vessels, your blood, and your heart. And they're responsible for transporting nutrients, oxygen, and hormones to cells throughout the body and removing metabolic wastes. Diabetes can lead to insufficient blood flow, which can cause high blood pressure and damage to blood vessels. This can either be macrovascular disease, which can lead to heart attack or stroke, or microvascular disease, which can lead to kidney damage and problems with the nervous system. Diabetics with poor circulation are also at risk for infection and wounds, which leads right into the nervous system, which is all your complex collection of nerves and your neurons that transmit signals within the body. Diabetics can have neuropathies, which is nerve damage, which can lead to pain and numbness in the legs, feet, toes, arms, hands, or fingers. This can lead to loss of sensation, resulting in amputation, because if diabetics have wounds that go unnoticed, that can lead to severe infection and they'll have to get an amputation. One other organ system that is affected is your digestive system. This is your stomach, gallbladder, liver, pancreas, small and large intestines, and your esophagus. And they're responsible for breaking down food and absorbing nutrients. Diabetics can suffer from abdominal pain, weight loss, vomiting, acid reflux, and gastroparesis. Again, this is a very general overview of the structure and function of your organ systems. The disease we're going to discuss in relation to the endocrine system is type 1 diabetes. Once known as juvenile diabetes or insulin-dependent diabetes, it is a chronic condition in which the pancreas produces little or no insulin. Insulin is a hormone needed to allow sugar or glucose to enter cells to produce energy. The exact cause of type 1 diabetes is unknown. It's usually the body's own immune system, which normally fights harmful bacteria and viruses, and they mistakenly destroy the insulin-producing islet or islets of Langerhans cells in the pancreas. Other possible causes include genetics or exposure to viruses and other environmental factors. The role of insulin. Once a significant number of islet cells are destroyed, you'll produce little or no insulin. Insulin is a hormone that comes from a gland situated behind and below the stomach, the pancreas. The pancreas secretes insulin into the bloodstream. Um, The insulin circulates, allowing sugar to enter your cells. Insulin lowers the amount of sugar in your bloodstream. As As your blood sugar level drops, so does the secretion of insulin from your pancreas. The role of glucose. Glucose, or sugar, is a main energy source for the cells that make up muscles and other tissues. Glucose comes from two major sources, food and your liver. Sugar is absorbed into the bloodstream where it enters cells with the help of insulin. Your liver stores glucose as glycogen. When your glucose levels are low, such as when you haven't eaten in a while, the liver breaks down the stored glycogen into glucose to keep your glucose levels within a normal range. The lifestyle choices you must make while being diabetic are much different than a person who is not diabetic. Anytime you want to eat something, you have to make sure you have your your insulin and you take the right amount so that your body can maintain homeostasis. Um, Your diet can be the same as other people's, but you have to be more careful and it can be harder to control your blood sugar with some foods versus others. Like the more sugar, the more likely you are to induce a spike in blood sugar levels, and that causes homeostasis to be less level. Uh, You must exercise as much as possible to remain healthy. 
and ingesting drugs and alcohol is not the best idea when you're diabetic because you don't know how it will affect you because different alcohols or different drugs can affect your glucose levels in different ways. So for this next part, we're going to talk about how the endocrine system maintains homeostasis. So the endocrine system plays an important role in homeostasis because hormones regulate the activity of body cells. The release of hormones into the blood is controlled by a stimulus. For example, the stimulus either causes an increase or a decrease in the amount of hormones secreted. Then, the response to a stimulus changes the internal conditions and may itself become a new stimulus. This self-adjusting mechanism is called feedback regulation. Control of blood glucose level is an example of negative feedback. Blood glucose concentration rises after a meal, the stimulus. The hormone insulin is released by the pancreas and it speeds up the transport of glucose from the blood and into the selected tissues, the response. Blood glucose concentrations then decrease, which then decreases the original stimulus. The secretion of insulin into the blood is then decreased. So for the very last part of the project, uh, we have demographics of the disease diabetes. So I got a few numbers here for the United States. I'm going to start off with approximately 1.25 million uh, Americans have type 1 diabetes. And by the year of 2050, there's about expected 5 million people to be diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. An estimated 40,000 people are diagnosed with type 1 diabetes each year. And 200,000 people under the age of 20 have type 1 diabetes. Um, this treatment can be helped, but the condition cannot be cured, obviously. So with this many numbers, by there's always like an increase of people getting type 1 diabetes. And especially between the years 2001 and 2009, there was a 21% of an increase in people with this type 1 diabetes. But in the years 2011 and 2012, 17,900 children and adolescents under the age of 20 were diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. Um, back to the year 2050, 600,000 people under the age of 20 are expected to have type 1 diabetes. And among people under the age of 20, non-Hispanic whites had the highest rates of new diagnosis of type 1 diabetes. And we do know that type 1 diabetes occurs in our immune system. But when our body is fighting the infection, um, our insulin producing beta cells and pancreas are being destroyed. So with that, there's also $14 billion in type 1 diabetes associated health care expenditures and lost income each year. Each year there has been that. And less than a third of people with type 1 diabetes consistently achieve target blood glucose control levels. Preliminary data from T1 International's 2018 Access and Supply Survey that says one of, four, ev one of every four U.S. respondents have ratio on insulin due to cost. But let's do some world numbers now. The number of people with diabetes has risen from 108 million to, in 1980 to 422 million in 2014. And the global prevalence of diabetes among adults over age of 18 has risen from 4.7 in 1980 as well to 8.5% in 2014. Diabetes prevalence has been rising more rapidly in the middle and low income countries. But diabetes is a major cause of blindness, kidney failure, and heart attack, stroke, and lower limb amputation. And in 2016, an estimated 1.6 million deaths were directly caused by diabetes. Another 2.2 million deaths were attributed to high school blood glucose in 2012. Almost half of the deaths attributable to high school blood glucose occur in the age of 7 years old. Who estimates the diabetes was the seventh leading cause of death in 2016? Also, healthy diet and regular physical activity 
maintaining a normal body weight and avoiding tobacco uses are ways to prevent and delay an onset of type 2 diabetes. Diabetes can be treatable and its consequences avoided or delayed with diet, physical activity, medication, and regular screening and treatment for complications. Thank you for listening to our podcast today.